So how do you actually get clients with no case studies or results? So just follow these keynotes and it might actually help you. So at the end of the day, this is the first way to do it. So the student method, which is like you just act like a marketing student at a university and you just outreach to these clients and just tell them, hey, I'm doing a marketing project on XYZ thing in terms of your niche. Let's just say real estate, right? I'm a real estate student in business and I wanted to know how you guys get customers in order to sell a property or, you know, close a deal they'll probably be more than likely to talk to you about it. Believe me, try it out yourself. Cold call them or do it on cold email. I'll show you examples of how to do this in a bit, but try it yourself. Internship. This is another way for you to get clients by just getting experience first. So if you don't know what you're doing, and this is the first time, let's just say you have zero experience in sales and in marketing and getting clients, right? Just do an internship at an agency that's already successful. Do it for free. The whole thing is just to get experience at the end of the day. So once you have that, you can use it in your business, okay? This is what I recommend if you're just starting out. This is what I did, and that's how I got my clients, okay? Business owner method. This is more like balls to the walls type of method if you want to go all in and if you fully believe in what you offer. Now, there's different ways to do this on a cold call and on cold email, and I'll show you examples about this. Again, I have this here. I have this document here for this thing for you to use. Again, this is going to be in the Facebook group or the Discord. What you can do is that you can use this sheet. It'll show you exactly examples of how to do this and how I used it for my past agency and how we got more clients. This is how you would do it. Just go through there and you'll be able to find it. But also, okay, the business owner method, again, the tricky part about this is that you're gonna have to be able to handle objections on a sales call. If you're not good at that, then I have other videos talking about that. But, but besides that, let's talk about the free trial method. This is something that you know I don't really do. I don't recommend you do. But if you have zero experience, let's just say you've never done this before, okay? Then you're gonna have to do free trials because you don't have the mental model of how it looks like in your brain. Like you conceptually do not see how it looks like. You don't feel it. So you have to feel it first. And in order to feel it, you have to do the activity. So that's why free trials are very useful in terms of the initial inflow of experience. But at the end of the day, once you do this and once you do all these things well, do not do free trials. Do not do anything for free because value is undermined. Again, if you saw my other video on value consumption on how people consume value, right? On tangible and intangible levels, on tactical versus non-tactical levels, right? You want to think about that and you want to think about it in terms of a free trial, okay? Free trials are less valuable to a business if they didn't pay for it and they're less committed. Therefore, you know, these clients might be very flaky. I'm sure you've seen that happen to you, right? A lot of clients say, hey, thank you for the free trial and then they leave, you know, they ghost you. That's the reason why, because they don't see value. That's why you have to make sure they pay, okay? So tips to do this properly. And I'll dive into a specific example. It's all in this training as well, but cold email. Write it like a checklist, okay? Keep it short, keep it human, keep it lowercase. I'm sure you've seen the sales emails in your own email like inbox, right? On your spam that they're just like, hey, I have something to sell you. They're all in capitals. Or they're like saying like this weird thing about like, hey, I have this client offer guaranteed. The words like guarantee, media, hey, I run an agency, I run a company, I run a business. All these things in your brain, they trigger something. They trigger sales resistance, okay? So when you do your cold email, make sure that it just looks humanized. And I'll show you what I mean in a second, okay? Tips for cold calling, okay? If you're doing the business owner method, okay? This is, this is mainly for the business owner method, not for the student method. But sound confident, but also unattached or detached when you do a cold call, okay? So for example, if you want to build status, this is how you do it. So be like, hey, John, um, to be honest, John, I actually run a company here in Vancouver, BC, and we have a you know business sales pitch. And I just wonder if it's possible if I could pitch it to you. Usually they'll say, sure. If you say it's like a business sales pitch or I run a business and a company here in Vancouver, BC near them. Okay. And then what you do afterwards is like you state your offer and you're just like, Hey John, um, yeah, so this is what we offer. And this is what we do. But at the end of the day, I don't really know you that well. So I'm just assuming at the end of the day, I just want to see if this can even work. Cause you know, I just want to make sure that your team can handle the amount of influx of orders based on our company, because we have some people on our team and we have some people on your team. I just don't know how well it will work. Um, maybe it might be a little bit more better if we can speak on a scheduled time to see if it can. You see what I mean there? You're building a status frame. You're building a gap. But also at the same time, when you say, can we schedule because I'm too busy or X, Y, and Z reason, right? Because John, I'm, I'm just too busy. You know, I, I don't know if we can actually speak. I just want to know if it's even possible, right? And then when you say something like that, it builds a status even more and a gap even more. And then from there, they will book the meeting. Believe me, 
you have to try it out yourself, but you can book them on the same call and get them to close either on the same day or the day after by doing it that way. Okay. And then the student method, it's actually the opposite of sounding confident and also unattached. So when you act like a student, think of yourself as a student, like actual, like how do you think students think in terms of university? They're usually unconfident. They have, you know, to level of low self-esteem. I'm not saying this to label everybody like this. Not everybody's like this, but generally speaking, they have less experience. So what you have to do on the cold call or on, you know, cold email, you have to illustrate that to them, that you have less experience and therefore they have more experience. So the status between you and them is higher. So they're, they're higher than you to an extent, but by doing that, it allows you easier access into the interviewer, into, you know, talking to them. Does that sort of make sense? So for instance, if I was on a cold call with John, right? Like, Hey John, um, to be honest, I'm actually running a, um, like I, I, I have a project, um, that I have, I'm a marketing student, um, you know, in real estate. And I was just curious, um, you know, how it's like to be in real estate and getting clients and customers. Um, it's just for my project. Is it all right? If I can talk to you about it, usually they'll say, sure. And usually they tell you on the cold call, if you want to talk to them on cold call or be like, Hey, can I actually just meet you in person or, you know, speak with you on a meeting just to see if, um, you know, cause I just want to show you the project and I just want to see if, um, I can ask you these questions. You know, I don't know how helpful it is. I know you're quite busy again. We're building the status for them. So it plays on their ego. Okay. Does that make, make sense? It builds a difference. And then from there, when you sound that unconfident, they're more than likely to let you jump into the circle and get connected to them. Believe me, it works. Try it out yourself. So second is backend retention models with communities and groups. So I'm sure you've seen Facebook groups. I'm sure you've seen my own YouTube channel. And if you've seen my other video on how I get clients through my organic content bundle, we have to build something of that nature on the back end of getting these clients through cold calls or cold emails, because these people cannot just be cold. They cannot work with you just once. Okay. If they've spoken to you as a student, let's just say we work with one of them for a free trial as a student, right? To get experience, let's say later down the line, 12 months later down the line, you get a client and you actually explode in their business and you made so much ROI for them. But because these people already knew you, don't you think it's beneficial to have them in a group or community where they're funneled through so that, you know, they can keep coming back to you if they're wondering about what you're doing, or if they want to know answers to X, Y, Z problem in their life and they don't have the solution, even though you might've not helped them in the beginning. They might be more warmed up now after a year because they already knew since the very beginning where you started, they're more likely to work with you. So this is what you have to do. So Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups, um, YouTube channel, content funnel, again, use that. And if you're wondering where this, all this method and all these things are, the examples are in this PDF. So if you need access, Discord and Facebook group, it should be in there. So, so let's dive into the method of how to do this on cold email with the student method first, okay? So on cold email, what we do again, we have to keep it simple, keep it humanized. So I had a question about, you know, their problem. Let's just say I had a question about getting, you know, this property sold or getting, you know, details about this property in this area. You act like a client or you act like a student and you just pique curiosity what's happening in their brain in terms of real estate agent, right? That's just, that's just an example, right? Or you can just say inquiry. Okay. And then you're just like, Hey, my name is Josh. I'm a UBC student you know, in solder studying in XYZ niche, AKA real estate. You know, I'm a student studying in real estate in solder. I'm doing a marketing project on real estate about getting clients or getting customers or getting properties or selling properties, X, Y, and Z, whatever you're trying to learn about. Okay. That they need help with. Okay. I was wondering if it's possible, if I can interview about these things to make sure it's all right. So you will want to re re like reword this, but like what you want to say is like, Hey, is it all right? If it's possible or, do you mind? Um, do you have the time? Do you want to build the status for them? Again, understand that we do it on a cold call, but we do it on cold email. Okay. When you do that, it makes it more likely for them to respond to you. Okay. And he's like, thanks, Josh. You know, you, you see how humanized I keep it. I keep it very short, sweet, and keep it very, you know, realistic. Same for my iPhone. Make sure you have this in there because it makes it look more real. Works better if you had a university email. Big caveat, understand different universities have different policies. I don't know if it's possible that you can actually do this, but understand the policies of your university or whatever college or whatever you're doing in terms of their email. But if you had the email, it works better. Okay. It converts it better because you're using your university as leverage to get them on a call or get them on a meeting. Okay. So the other way is the balls to the walls method. 
again, this is if you believe that you're fully convinced in your offer and you fully believe that what you're selling is the best thing in the world, okay? So headline, inquiry for John, inquiry for Nathan, or just put inquiry, okay? Just keep it simple. Hi, this is Josh, just called in, but there was no response. I would like to you know, do XYZ thing with your company, your business, XYZ thing, and then put your offer there, like pay for performance or free trial, X, Y, and Z, whatever it is. Now, what the reason why I say just called in because it creates a, a leverage point of what you've already done in the past. So it gives them reference. So it's not like completely cold. Does that sort of make sense? It's somewhat warm. So they sort of realize, oh, you must have called in and I just didn't pick up. Okay, understand that. That's why I do that. Did not know if you guys would be able to handle it or not. This builds status, okay? Handle it or not. Build status of whether they should or they don't, you know, and also, you know, shows that you you actually run a true company in the business. Can you guys give me a quick text back on my cell possibly? Now you want them to text you because you can have their number saved on your phone or you can have them call you back. You know, call, calling you back, you want to make sure that you're actually on your phone in the next hour because they will call you back in the next one to five hours. I've seen it range from that area, but it depends on the niche of the industry. So put your number here. Thanks. And send for my iPhone again. You see how I do it? It's like a checklist. You see, it's very short, very concise, but it's very humanized. It's not like with all this wanky shit. Cause I'm, I'm sure you've seen it. Okay. On spam. What do you see? They probably send it to you. Like, hi, John. Um, what we have is an amazing offer and we're doing like 80% on client results and we got clients, uh, for, uh, Evan, you know, he's part of the thing is it already looks like a sales email. So therefore there's no reason for me to respond. You want to make sure that it looks humanized. So that's what you would do. And then any emails work, but I highly recommend that you use a business email for this because it works better. But at the end of the day, right? Like, again, what we want is to humanize everything to make sure for just this method here, okay, that we build a status frame between both of us. So you guys either match like this or you're higher than them. And when you do that, they're more likely to reply to you, okay? So those are two ways. The, the other way is the free trial method. Now, I don't do this. I don't recommend it. Not the best way to do it. The reason why I don't do free trials is because people undermine value, okay? When they look at a price tag, they attach value to it. Again, I talked about this, intangible, intangible value, right? In terms of tangible value, when you put a price tag to something, they see the value, like they physically feel it and see it, okay? Therefore, they know how much it's worth. But if you're offering something for free, think about it. Think about every time you walk down the street, you see someone give you a free pamphlet, right? On... I don't know, getting burgers, whatever it is. You know, you walk down the street, they give you a free pamphlet. They're like, hey, do this free thing, coupon, X, Y, and Z. How, how likely would you remember that? You probably forgot about it, right? Even right now, you're probably thinking about it, but you forgot every time that you got a free pamphlet. Reason why? Because you've attached no value to it. Therefore, it's free, you know? And therefore, you threw it out. You put it on the side and you just think about it. You know, you don't even think about it. You just leave it there because it's free. That's the same thing that's going to happen to you if you do a free trial. That's why I don't recommend this, but if you want to, again, you can use the examples of my cold email template or my cold call scripts in here and you can use it as a way to craft your offer. But I don't have a script for this because I don't do it myself. But if you want to do it and you think that it's useful, again, this is for people that have zero experience. So if you don't do the internship thing, as I mentioned, right? And you want to just get experience again, free trials are a great way to get just your foot in the door to get experience as a beginner. But after you do this, no more free trials, please, for the love of God, do not do free trials because your value is going to be, it's going to be thrown out. Like, like you're, you're literally useless. Believe me, it happened to me. You're very flaky. Believe me. And you don't want these lines because they're very cheap as well. So the other way to do this is just doing the internship. As I mentioned, guys, if you have zero, zero, like zero experience, right? Just go do an internship at a successful company and get the experience first and then come back and do the activity for yourself because you'll have a mental model of experience in your brain of how it works. Okay. That's all you need right now. Proof of concept. Because right now, if you're a beginner with no case studies, no results, and you know, you've never done this, get experience first. This is what I did to actually learn how to do cold calling, get clients for my company. You know, I had to do cold calling or I had to do X, Y, Z thing. Cause I worked with marketing teams and I scaled other sales teams. Right. In order for me to do that, I had to go through this to learn how to do it. You know, I got it from a, another agency, another company. Okay. So understand that. That's why working at startups, working at um, sales, entry sale jobs are super important because you get the mental model of experience of how it looks like in a real tangible way. Okay. Your brain doesn't have a tangible thing right now because it's never done it. 
but you need a tangible thing to get a proof of concept. So it provides, again, proof and evidence that you can do it, okay? That's why you would do this. Now, another method. Now, this is called the free value method, okay? You can do it in terms of the balls to the walls method, in terms of you know acting like a business owner and just going all in. But the free value method is basically like, just give them something they can use, but they would need you to fix the whole thing. So what I'm talking about is this over here. So in terms of ads, let's just say you run a ads agency for health clinics, right? What you do is that you give them the formula of how to get clients and patients for their health clinic with the ads. So the ads work, we know they work. 80 to 90% of the time they do work, you've tested. So you give them that and they do it themselves and they get results and they're happy. They see value now in you to an extent, right? What you can do is that they probably need a landing page now for that traffic to convert, right? Let's just say they're able to get a bunch of clients and a bunch of traffic through the ads, but nothing converts. You know, nothing is actually booked in. Well, what would they need is to pay you in order for you to fix the whole thing. That's what I'm saying. They need you to fix the whole thing because they need you to fix the landing page in order to convert not only the ads, but the traffic that goes from the ads to the landing page for them to, you know, get the patients to come in on a daily basis. Okay. Understand this. So you can do it this way as well with this method together. Okay. Once you get them on a call, you can do this and maybe it works. I won't know because I haven't tried it out myself yet. I've only tried out, you know, literally doing, doing it this way, but you can try out this. I got this from another agency owner. She's been in business longer than me, but please understand you can do this and it'll probably warm them up a, a little bit more. So with that being said, let's dive over here. So as I mentioned, the student method from your university, again, depending on the policy, depending on the university you're in or college or whatever it is, you can use their email or use a email that looks legit to an extent, right? And then you can call the email or do a cold call. Again, we want to outreach to these clients and make sure that you track all this on a tracking sheet. Um, the reason why we track it is because we can get data, okay? Because at the same time, once you're doing all of this, you want to make sure you can track all this. Because if you're not tracking all this, you're not going to really win because you really can't tell if what you're doing is working, okay? So make sure when you do this, do it a hundred times to see if it works. And then another thing, again, free trial method, okay? This is something that you can also do. You can do like a free trial, but also add in like a free testimonial. So what I'm talking about is an exchange of value. So let's just say like to John, right? Hey, John, um, I'm curious. Um, I wanted to offer this free thing to you based on performance basis of getting you a client. I just don't know how well it works. So I was wondering if it's all right with you that I can do this for free, but in exchange, you can become a testimonial for my business and you can put this through your content funnel. And this is my next point. So. Once you do the free trials or once you do the student method or once you do the balls to walls method, you can actually use all those as content pillars or content pieces for your audience. So for instance, if you check my channel right now, I just uploaded a new video with Melanie Van Hawk. If you check that video, the reason why I talk about her is because she ran a six figure to multi, you know, five figure agency, right? And again, it warms up the traffic that you're watching this video. So I'm warming you up and nurturing you, but also at the same time, you might be potential clients, right? So we're warming up you again. So that's what you need to do in terms of when you talk to these types of people and these different types of methods, make sure you record it so you can utilize it. Even if they don't buy it, you can still utilize it as content for social proof. Again, the brain and the human brain, what does it do? It needs reference points of what you're talking about in terms of curiosity. Okay. And when it does that, when you have social proof on, you know, your content or on your YouTube channel, for instance, like you watching this video you probably came from my Danko video or my Imangaji video or my recent videos, right. On value-based marketing, right. Then you understand that when you do something like that, it builds back end content funnels, but also it builds value-based marketing for these types of clients that warm them up and pre-qualify them to work with you. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? So you can build the content on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, wherever you think that you want them to be, or wherever your market is, you can funnel them through there and they would be more likely to work with you. Again, you can, you can get all of this, all of this, like the scripts in this, um, PDF. So an example of this is my YouTube channel, as you can see. So the reason why you're watching this video is because you got value from one of these three or four videos, my previous videos. Cause again, how does value work? It's extended and it's cut into pieces based on consumption. So you consumed a video that's an hour. You consumed a video that's 30 minutes. You consumed a video that's another hour. You consumed another video that's 30 minutes. What's going to happen to you? 
Well, based on your brain, you're like, Josh has value. Therefore, I must watch his next video. And that's why you're here. And that's why you're watching this. But understand, when you build value, you also warm up your traffic. So make sure that you do that well with this type of method that whatever method you choose, just make sure you do it properly. Because once you record everything, think about it, like truly think about it, right? If we had a lead and we had a client and a customer that's cold, right? That wanted to know more about us, right? Imagine if you had over 50 videos about who you work with and those people are actually the people that you interviewed through one of these three things. Do you think that that person that you just spoke with, the cold, like the cold lead or the cold client in the industry, do you think they're more likely to trust you or think about you? Probably, right? They're probably going to think about you more because they're going to watch all the interviews and it's like, oh, you know this person in the industry. Oh, you know this person. And they have connections to those people as well. So they can talk to them just to make sure that's right. And then from there, they're basically building all the gaps and filling up the gaps in their brain based on curiosity. And then from there, they have social proof and then they're more likely to work with you. Does that make sense? And that's why we build this backend thing because eventually, even if they don't work with you now, they might work with you later because they're warmed up from the very beginning and they saw you go from a student to a business owner and they probably want to be part of that process as well so they can inspire other people. Does that sort of make sense? So with balls to the walls method, I do have a big caveat with this is that if you don't like do this properly, you're going to mess it up. So first thing is just sell it and overcome objections. It sounds easy, but it's harder than you think if you've never done it before. So for this to work, have conviction and also make sure that your offer is good. Risk reversal offers work the best. The offer, you know, how to make the offer is all in this PDF. So make sure you have that PDF to understand how to, you know, illustrate that offer. I have an example of that. So with conviction, make sure that you actually give a shit. Like you, you believe that this will help, help them. Now, again, if, if you've never done this before, this is going to be very hard. That's what I'm saying. This is the hardest thing to do. If you don't have a proof of concept, that's why I said, if you can do an internship or somehow do a free trial or get some level of mental, mental models in your brain of how it works then you can see it. Okay. And you can build conviction, but let's just say you just want to jump in all the way through, have conviction in what you offer and truly believe in what you offer. Cause your tone changes every time you talk to someone and your body language changes and your facial, like your facial expressions, they change based on the conviction that you have to who you talk to. Okay. Does that make sense? So make sure that you do this properly for this to work. So your biggest problem is nine times out of 10, probably going to be objection handling, right? You're going to have so much trouble closing these clients on either cold or somewhat warm clients because you can't handle all the objections of, I'll think about it. Like Josh, I'll, I'll think about it. Or um, Josh, I have to talk to my partner. Or uh, Josh, I have to um, see if I have the funds. You know, I have to think about this and I have to really decide. But the question is that if you're here, it already implies that it's important. Action implies that you're important. And because you're here, therefore, you must change this right now because we know the biggest problem right now is the fact that it's not the fact that you don't have money. It's the fact that you're afraid to spend the money because if you were in enough pain, do you think you would change? You would because the strongest emotion to change is paying for a human being. So therefore, the fact that you're saying it's expensive is the fact that you should do it because you're feeling pain from it. That's why you have to pay this. And that's one way to overcome it. But you can watch this video here and this video here. Oh, crap. You can watch this video here based on how to overcome these objections. I have an entire sheet, like a PDF with this video that you can go through yourself on how to do it yourself. Okay. This one shows you how to do it with philosophy. This one shows you how to do it with psychology and philosophy and biology. So if you're confused on how to overcome objections, watch one of like this one or that one, and then it'll help you through it. This is a one hour video. This is like 20 minutes, but it'll, I guarantee it will help you to overcome the objections because every objection is a fallacy. Believe me, believe me. Because at the end of the day, if you were perfect, right? If you were perfect at illustrating the perfect arguments, you were therefore not needing to watch this video. Therefore you would have done the activity. But the fact that you're watching this video already argues to me that there must be a weakness in what you're doing because you know, you're imperfect. You can't be perfect. There's no, no, no way, but the brain loves to do this. So if you're wondering how to do like how to handle that objection and handle all the other ones, watch these two and I'll probably link them on the screen somewhere. So. With that being said, once you get them through this, through the content funnel, make sure that you create a group. Now I have like, if you, if you see my other interview with Daniel, right? Not the one with 30 K, like the other Daniel in terms of, um, his music company, right? The thing about him is that he built a group on Instagram, Discord, Facebook and school. Eventually you can do it on school, but you can funnel these clients through here. And then again, as I mentioned, these are warm leads that will buy later nine to 12 months. Make sure you're collecting emails as well. At the same time, if you can collect emails and do all this at the same time, 
you're in a very good place. Believe me, most people don't think like this because, again, if you're beginning and you're starting, you don't think that far. You know, you don't have a proof of concept. In order to do that, you have to do it like this. And if you look over here, as I mentioned earlier, right, if you record the videos as interviews, as you know, with other business owners, it creates more social proof. Again, social proof tendency. You're basically warming up and pre-qualifying people that eventually might buy from you later down the line. So again, nine to 12 months later, and that's the goal. Okay. That's the back end goal. The front end goal is just to get some experience in, to get some conviction to see if it even works. Again, track all of this, make a data sheet on Google sheet and track all of your numbers to make sure this is all working. But again, your biggest problem, if you're doing this method, probably going to be objection handling, probably going to be closing. So I have videos like that. So anyways, I hope you found this video somewhat useful. Um, if you made it up to this point, thank you. Glad, glad that you made it this far. Now, if you want to work with me, again, my link is down below based on my calendar. Again, I have a bunch of questions on there to qualify you, obviously. I don't work with everybody. I usually say no 80 to 90% of the time because if you're not a great fit, I'll tell you right away. Okay, what we do is very expensive. What we do is very, you know, it's optimized based on what you actually need in terms of your company and your business. But yeah, when you schedule it, just make sure that you answer them and answer all the questions properly because I will review it. But besides that, okay, if you need access, again, to this thing, Discord and Facebook group. And if you want to see my other video, corner of the screen. And remember, guys, subscribe to the channel, for Christ's sakes. I make videos like this all the time. And if you like videos like this, again, comment, like, whatever it is that makes the algorithm go low. Ooh, and then more people can see this video if it's useful to them.